Hello and thanks for joining us at interest.co.nz. I'm Janae Tibshirani and today I'm joined by S&P's US Chief Economist, Beth Ann Bovino. I'd just like to talk about the US economy. We have um, a trade war happening with China and also high um, government debt, but still you are quite upbeat on, on the US economy at the moment, at least. Over the near term, we see the US economy holding up relatively well. Um, Aside from even taking away the fiscal stimulus that is certainly giving the U.S. a, a bit of a nice boost near term, um, we've been expecting growth to hold up um, near, it was close to 3%, and now with that fiscal stimulus, it pushes it up to a 3% rate on growth for this year and slowing down, but to a nice read in, 2000, um, in 2019 as well to about 25 A lot of factors are at play. The momentum seems to be, the fundamentals are strong in the U.S. We have, we have people getting jobs. Uh, we're looking at job gains at around 200,000 uh, per month on average. To put it into perspective, trend job uh, job gains would be around 125 to 150. So you're really seeing the momentum there, and those jobs are getting bigger paychecks, not huge, but getting bigger paychecks for people to spend. Top that off with the with a little bit of a tax uh, tax cut from Uncle Sam. People are feeling pretty happy, and you're seeing that in confidence readings and also at the shopping malls. Right, but this this trade war uh, looming with with China is there, and it and it's. Um, it's creating a lot of market volatility at the very least. What do you think the impacts of, of that are currently and, and, and looking to the future? Interestingly, we don't really, what we see it is, we do see it in uh, business confidence readings. You're starting to see business getting worried about what to expect. Should they invest? Should they should they plan for a stronger economy or slow back and uh, shut down their, shut their pocketbooks? That's a worry, but right now it's all more just kind of what we're hearing in confidence readings. We also would say that one thing that we saw from the trade from the trade war, if you want to call it that, um, is that uh, you saw businesses getting ahead of tariffs. That's why we saw a pretty nice reading for that second quarter GDP uh, growth figure for the U.S. It was partly because businesses were investing now because it was cheaper before the tariffs cut in. Um, we haven't seen the tariffs really show up in inflation readings, and we do want to say that the impact is going to be direct effects from the uh, the trade war between the U.S. and China, likely to be small. And that's and the reason why is because the U.S. is so big. We're close to $20 trillion, and we're very much domestically driven. Uh, domestic economy is probably makes up 85 to maybe even 90 percent. So the trade will hit, and those tariffs will hit certain sectors. But for the U.S. overall, it's still a small hit. What is the effect, um, do you think, of those, those tariffs on manufacturing and on, on the inputs to make goods, and, and how might that feed through to inflation? One of the worries that we see, the inflation reading, what, we, what we're seeing in terms of the components. Um, now, businesses have a choice. U.S. businesses have a choice, whether that they eat the cost, uh, and basically that means smaller profits. Um, certainly they don't want to do that, but there is a question of customer loyalty. Um, wanna, they don't want to pass it on getting their customers angry for customers to go find a substitute somewhere else. So it really depends on whether, first of all, there's substitutes, substitutes that customers can take advantage of businesses might not want to pass on that cost. Another thing that would be at play is how long will this last? If businesses think it only lasts for a month or two months, well, they might want to eat it because they, they want to keep that public relations with their with their consumers still strong. Uh, we are starting to see some some businesses passing that on, passing on the cost to consumers. Um, that will have a hit, um, that will push up inflation. Don't think that's going to make the Fed move in terms of raising rates faster. I think, again, the Fed sees this as something that's temporary and will, pa um, will pass through kind of temporary pass through with the uh, with in a few months but that also remains to be seen okay Beth and in terms of New Zealand it's quite different um, uh, as you're saying US is a large economy it perhaps can absorb the trade war but differently to a smaller export oriented country like New Zealand what do you think the effects will be for, for our economy well, in terms of what's, uh, what you could expect from, again, I'm a U.S. chief economist, but I do certainly look at everywhere else in the world, and the worry with, uh, with New Zealand is particularly what happens with China. China is also going to be affected by the trade war. You're already, you might already see, starting to see some of that slowdown in, in, in Chinese GDP numbers, and that will mean less demand for, for, uh, for basically uh, product from New Zealand. So that could be certainly a, an issue for, for New Zealand uh, going forward. Uh, on the plus side, New Zealand might benefit a little bit. One thing is the strong dollar. The U.S strong dollar might make those 
lovely Sauvignon Blancs, even more attractive with a cheaper with a cheaper uh, price tag. Another possibility is this again tied to that substitute effect. Um, U.S. Who's getting hurt? The U.S. sectors that are going to get hurt by uh, the trade war, particularly agriculture. That's where the tariffs are hit uh, very hard. So that means that well, U.S. U.S. Uh, U.S. agriculture might be less exp- like, must might be less attractive. Maybe opening the opportunity for New Zealand agriculture to get their foot more of their foot in the door in China. Right, so that's interesting. So New Zealand can sort of benefit from from the US's uh, peril to some extent. You can always, you know, you can always uh, find a, find the bright side, and that might be one way to take a look at it. But still, um, the New Zealand is a an open small economy, uh, open small export led economy, and so they will uh, um, likely that that hit uh, from a lower do- a smaller demand from China uh, could actually certainly be a, a, a they'll feel that as well. Sure, Beth, and I'd just like to talk about uh, the government debt levels in in the US and and these are at sort of over 100% of GDP in New Zealand we're trying to get our uh, sovereign debt to 20% of GDP obviously not not quite comparable economies but um, you're looking at a a different situation there how concerned are you about the amount of debt that the government is racking up as it sort of um, tries to stimulate the economy? Well, I think um, one, first I, do, I want to be clear that I'm not a sovereign rating analyst. I'm an economist, um, um, so I just wanted to be clear on that. Um, one thing to take into account: certainly, watching uh, the U.S. Uh, federal debt levels as a percentage of GDP reaching that 100-point mark. Um, I believe that the Congressional Budget Office is saying that by to, uh, by 2028 it could actually go even higher, reaching World War II record levels. So th- these are certainly concerns. Uh, one of the things we talk about the you know certainly the fiscal spending that has gone into place, giving this you. US economy a near-term boost for this year and the next year but and that certainly um, in our estimates that will actually mean that the fiscal deficit will widen further we're expecting by 2020 it'll actually breach 1 trillion uh, and that's a concern however one of the things that really is the focus is what's happening with our uh, basically our retiree entitlement um, entitlement both Medicare and Social Security no no right now no policymaker wants to touch that and that is one of the reasons why we see the uh, the large debt uh, US government debt growing so rapidly and look, look we've got the midterms coming up in the US what happens um, if there is a gridlock between the Democrats and the Republicans and the the government can't push through as much fiscal stimulus as as it's planned and that sort of sugar rush kind of dries up what what, what could be the impact of that <laughs> I have to laugh gridlock oh that's new um, that's been something that we've had now for 10 years it seems um, in terms of the gridlock um, so the question would be um, could the Right now, um, right now we have the, the government stimulus that both the tax the tax reform, uh, which is part tax reform. We do we do recognize that a lot of it also is tax cuts, that, which will weigh on on the fiscal deficit. The other question, of course, is the um, bipartisan budget agreement, which also was a bit of a stimulus for the U.S. economy. Um, the question, of course, is um, right now we're going into the midterm elections. What will happen? Who will be in place? Could you see? We don't, you know, in terms of questioning what uh, how the elections will come about. I certainly don't want to bet money on that because it seems to be a losing proposition. Um, but uh, right now, the pollsters say that the Senate will likely stay with. Republicans and the and the House may flip to the Democrats. That means a gridlock Congress. Uh, the question of getting something through after that becomes even more difficult. I know the Trump administration talked about getting a little bit more um, stimulus through another tax cut for um, close to the two, 2020 elections. It seems if we do have a, a, a gridlock Congress, it's going to be even harder to push that through. Okay, sure. So in terms of your um, outlook, are you having to um factor that in to, to the outlook for say 2019-20? For the for the change in the uh, gridlock Congress, um, no, we would say we would say the U.S. economy right now the private sector seems to be rather strong. It continues to uh, continues to move along at a you know pretty much fundamentals are holding up relatively well. In terms of a gridlock Congress, as as gridlock Congress is something that we've almost gotten used to in the United States. We had a gridlock Congress in 2008, in 2010, in 2012, in 2014. It's something that well, unfortunately we've gotten used to, and indeed it's become more polar, polarized on Capitol Hill. But again, it's something that uh, we've 
unfortunately have had had to weather and we've weathered it as well as we can um, I would say in terms of what we expect for the US economy uh, one of the worries that we have is going into 2019 of course we do expect to see that stim uh, fiscal stimulus in our in our forecast we do see this fiscal st stimulus from the tax cuts and also the bipartisan budget agreement start to filter out of the system by 2019 into 2020 that's also when the Fed is raising rates um, the question of course is the Trump administration had argued that this was going to have a productivity generating boost to growth um, going out many, many years uh, at S&P Global, we're a bit skeptical on that. Hopefully we're wrong, but if, they, but if it doesn't have that productivity generating boost, but it creates more inflation instead, the Fed's going to have to even move faster, and that's a worry for the expansion going forward.